Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, Loretta Butler Turner receives her instruments of appointment as opposition leader. We have the details on the controversial swearing in. All this as some still talk of a possible return of Hubert Ingram. And what's on your Christmas wish list? Welcome to our news. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, Loretta Butler-Turner is now the leader of the official opposition. After a whirlwind week of shockers in Parliament and calls for resignations, Butler-Turner today became the first woman in the country's history to head Her Majesty's loyal opposition. But today's ceremony was nothing short of interesting as rumors swirl over the future of the Long Island MP and the six others supporting her. Clarity, a new direction, and a hope-filled change is on our horizon. Celebrating 15 years since she first entered frontline politics, Butler Turner pledged to give strong and positive representation of the opposition in Parliament. As she received her instruments of appointment as opposition leader from the Governor General, the Long Island MP said democracy isn't about the rule of a single individual, but about cooperation in the pursuit of the common good. Today is about the collective judgment and sincere beliefs of the majority of the duly elected representatives opposed to the government of the day. We have acted in accord with the Bahamas' constitution and in accord with parliamentary democracy. We have acted in accord with our consciences, as have others before us in this country. All but one of the MPs who signed that letter to the Governor General last week were present. As the ceremony was ongoing, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis in a statement called it an abuse of the party's democratic process by the blind, greedy, and selfish ambition of a few members of parliament. But after the ceremony, Butler Turner said a response to the party will come shortly. The opposition leader said her work starts immediately with the appointment of senators and a leader of opposition business in the House of Assembly in the person of North Eleuthera MP, Theo Neely. Um, I can tell you that much of what our decision is predicated on is on the constitutional, uh, the constitution of the Bahamas, which supersedes any constitution there is. And so our position certainly hearkens to all of the parameters of where we are as the official opposition, um, as laid out in the constitution of the Bahamas. We also need to ensure that we have a person on the Boundaries Commission. Um, we have an opportunity to do that. So from a statutory and um, a constitutional position, there is much work to be done, and we will not wait to draw it out. You will see immediate things happening within 24 hours. Now, as for Dr. Minnis' call for those seven FNM MPs to resign, Theo Neely, Hubert Chipman, Dr. Andrew Rawlins, as well as Richard Lightborn, all said they have no plans on stepping down as members of the party. So when you make decisions like this, there are always consequences. And I believe everybody understood or should have understood what the consequences can be. So that's something that uh, we went in uh, with our eyes open. The party needs to do what it has to do. I believe we were in our rights to do what we did. Uh, we're still FNM, and we certainly intend to work with them and be part of them. But uh, we'll have to see how they how they deal with with us as members of the bar. We're still members of the bar. I, I certainly do not have any plans whatsoever of resigning from the Free National Movement. I was elected in North Eleuthera as a member of the Free National Movement under that brand. The people elected me in that party under that brand, and I have no intentions whatsoever of resigning. I, I don't understand why I would, basically, to be straightforward and honest with you. We're not looking at, at, at creating a cult of personality around a figure who has not yet been able to demonstrate that they understand the the depth of the job at hand. And so I think that we're going to be about doing what needs to be done to change all of that. Over the weekend, there has been speculation of the Rebel 7 perhaps joining forces with the DNA if expelled from the FNM. Now, while DNA Chairman Andrew Wilson and DNA candidate Podesta Moore were present at the ceremony, the media got very little regarding the rumors. As you said, there are rumors. As you know, I usually speak from a position of fact. I don't deal in hypotheses. And so I imagine that people are very interested in what we have to do. Um, rumors are simply that, rumors. Between now and the next several weeks, I think there's opportunity for a lot to happen. I think the Bahamian people are interested in... I can't say what the plan is right now, but there is a plan. 
as far as today is a very historic day. Uh, it was something that culminated in some thinking, and we just decided to do what we had to do. Well, former Deputy Prime Minister Brent Simonet is shooting down allegations that the latest FNM drama is the work of former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram. Simonet says while those rumors have been swirling for days, he doesn't think his former boss has any interest in returning to frontline politics. Simonet, who served as Deputy Prime Minister in the last Ingram administration, says he's quite aware of the rumors, but quickly adds that there is simply no truth to them. I read that. I read that in the in the Punch with very much doubt. That I 100% don't believe he has a hand in any of this, um, and I very much doubt he would want to be um, put in that position. But some people are born to lead. In an unprecedented move that rocked Parliament last Wednesday, seven members of the Free National Movement's Parliamentary Caucus revealed that they wrote Governor General Dame Marguerite Pindling to have FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis removed as leader of the official opposition. Minnis has since said he will remain captain and invited those seven MPs to leave the party. Some have claimed that the latest issues in the FNM is an opportunity for Ingram to return as leader, but Simonet says the former prime minister has other issues to deal with. I think we have to look at Mr. Ingram's situation. His wife has not been well. Um, he's on his way home. Um, she has been away for a while. When asked if he would like to see Ingram return, Simonet said this. You know, the minute of, if I said, if I say today, Mr. Ingram make a very uh, good leader, then everyone will say Brent Simonet is supporting supporting Hubert Ingram. I'm not saying I am, not, but at some point I think every individuals all have their good points and their bad points. And this is a, a time in our history to let's look at who, who is the best group, which is the best grouping to be the next government of the, of the Bahamas. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Dana. Well, we're just days away from Christmas, and while many of us may be preparing our Christmas wish list, we took to the halls of Parliament to see just what some of them want for the holidays. Take a look. While we're getting closer and closer to the general election, members of Parliament this Christmas season appear to be more interested in their constituents this holiday. Well, for me, for my people in Southern Shores, I wish that we will have a peaceful uh, Christmas. Um, uh, in my constituency, sadly, we've had a lot of tragedies over the last three months. Uh, I've lost three young people under the age of 30 to gun violence in the last three months in Southern Shores. And so my Christmas wish is for there to be peace in the streets of Southern Shores uh, and for my people uh, to enjoy the holidays. See all of those persons who would have suffered in the hurricane, that they be restored. Um, even in greater form than they were before. That's my Christmas wish. It's been an interesting week for Central and South Africa MP Edison Key. Here's what he wants to see happen this holiday. We wish full employment for all Bahamians. And I, I trust that every single family would have a nice ham and turkey on their plate for their families. And a bright future for the new year, coming year. And God's blessing upon the Bahamas for everyone. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Uh, <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, everybody be happy and joyous and uh, stop, you know, uh, accepting doom and gloom. Uh, there's no doom and gloom. Things are going to be fine. Elections going to go fine. Country's going to be fine. That's my hope for everybody. Now, while we got a very extensive wish list from some MPs, some, well, some were very short-spoken. Not all Bahamians be happy. That's it? That's it. Happiness for Bahamians. Happiness for Bahamians. But we couldn't ask MPs what's on their Christmas wish list without talking to the pot cake himself. Tall Pines MP, Leslie Miller. Listen, this has been a very difficult year for our people. Um, 216 was just almost as bad as 217, but I'm happy to see that with Bahama and our coming on stream, that's going to ease a lot of the burden in our country. And with the Prime Minister initiating some new programs now, with the work training program, I think hopefully with God's grace we'll have a better 217, but we must still thank God for what he's done for us this year. We are alive, we're still kicking, it's a little rough, and we got to be our brothers and sisters keeper. That those who are unfortunate, we got to step to the plate and help them to go through a good Christmas. And we got to get these bums off the street from killing everybody, robbing and everything else. 
It's December 2016 and power outages are still very frequent. When our news returns, we get a little explanation on issues with Bahamas Power and Light. Stay with us.